Think you got the best of me Think you've had the last laugh Bet you think that everything good is gone Think you left me broken down Think that I'll come on and back Maybe you don't know me cause you're dead wrong What doesn't kill you makes you stronger Stronger, that's Kelly Clarkson on Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great and fabulous. And let's go ahead and sprinkle some wonderful day on top of that. Uh, first off, just want to say, you know, sometimes when we get our energy going and get things kind of grooving uh, in the right path, and this is totally an aside because I just had a phone call like moments ago. It is amazing how sometimes just being good, just being kind and loving and great Gratitude, as we've talked about, kindness, we've talked about in the past. Just practicing those behaviors on a regular basis may not necessarily get your SP tomorrow. Might be a couple weeks, right? But you will notice some really cool things start to happen. I got a really good chance of of um, catching a sporting event on floor seats because of a relationship I've created with someone. So it's just like I just kind of hit me up out of the blue and uh, it'd be for me and my dad, which is super cool. So anyway, we'll see how it all plays out in the big picture, but it, it should be pretty cool. Are we accidentally manipulating? Definitely a topic. I bump into this a lot, a lot. It's happened to me a couple times. I've done it myself a couple times. Generally speaking, I smack myself down very quickly with it. Uh, I think there's been probably one span where I might have gone a few days being a little bit in this place and then finally realized, oh my goodness, that's what you're doing. I want to bring this, of course, to your attention because once we are aware of some of the different things we do to sabotage ourselves, it becomes easier to see them. And when you can see them, you can do something about it. And that is really the trick with this whole process. Again, self-love. Yes, we want to love ourselves for sure, but sometimes there's maybe a couple things that are kind of in the way, maybe holding us back, maybe grabbing us by the collar. You know, ah, you know it's like, okay, I'm sorry. Sometimes we have to work through that thing that's blocking us, that internal mechanism. And I know, like I said, I've seen this happen in comments and emails. I've seen this happen in relationships with people I know, um, with, like I said, myself. I've done this before in past relationships for sure, back when I was certainly not nearly as savvy as to how energy transfers between people and how that actually affects relationships. And again, that goes back years, but it's something I've played with for years, and it's extremely powerful. So, Oh, is there something, this is one of the places where I think a lot of us have learned this, but was there something maybe when we were growing up where if mom and dad were mad at us or if we didn't get our way or if we wanted something and they weren't going to give it to us, that we had our kind of, our way to maybe throw a little cry down, maybe pout, maybe a tantrum. Maybe there was some way that we kind of went into this behavior that generally got results with our folks. Maybe got them to change their mind. Maybe it was just so annoying because you wouldn't stop. So they'd maybe trade something else. Maybe you didn't get what you wanted, but you'd get something else in return. So it always benefited you to kind of throw that little tantrum. When we do these kinds of things, that's manipulation. We're attempting to manipulate. And when we're doing that with a relationship that we care about or a specific person or with someone that we've maybe faltered in the past and maybe we're trying to repair... When we're doing things with the hopes of getting some sort of response back, with the hopes of creating some sort of turmoil, with the hopes of creating some sort of drama within their world that they feel the need to respond, with the hopes that maybe we might hurt them or they might feel pain the way we feel pain, with the hopes that somehow we're going to show them the error of their ways by in our minds, forcing them to look at it, right? Like, it's just, it's manipulation. And manipulation, no matter what side of it you're on, is not healthy. And if you've ever been on the side of it where you are being manipulated yourself, and being a nice guy, by the way, just generally speaking, uh, not pat myself on the back, just kind of generally a nice guy, right? I've been, you know, taken advantage of numerous times in my life. So I'm very savvy with manipulation. It's just something I see very quickly. I see right through it. I usually give people all sorts of rope. I'll just allow them all sorts of rope. Keep going, keep going. And eventually it's just like, yank. All right, you're done. And I'm done. And I will never, ever trust them, ever, ever. 
It would take such a miraculous change on their part to get that trust back. It would be such an intense, purposeful approach at getting that back. So again, if someone does that to me, they're out. Done. I don't care if they're trying to manifest me. I don't care if they're using Neville Goddard and doing everything perfectly. Trust me. Done. It's just one of those things. So we've got to be careful when we're trying to make comments to someone that is meant to elicit some sort of response. Are you, that's kind of how you'll tell. Am I about to text them this text message because I want them to feel a certain way that's, you know, like makes them understand what's going on? Um, And when I say feel a certain way, I kind of mean in the negative sense, right? If you're sending a text message because you want them to feel love, that's awesome. Do that all day long. That is beautiful. But if you're frustrated with them, they didn't text you back quick enough, so you feel that need to throw in that, well, obviously you're busy, so when you're not busy and you have a second to get back to me, feel free to do so, right? And it's got that attitude on it. Even a text message. I love when you get text messages, and this probably happens wrong for a lot of us anyway, where we read it with the wrong attitude, right? It just has that attitude. Again, that's us pushing ourselves out nine times out of 10. We're actually looking at the words and going, ah, this is how I'm feeling. This is obviously how it needs to be read. And again, if we're trying to get some sort of comment out of somebody, again, it's manipulation. Are you saying things like, I'm over this, right? Because we do it to the universe. And I think that's kind of one of the main points that I wanted to bring up too, is we might throw our hands up to the universe, to higher self, to whatever, and we'll try our little pouty approach with universe. And universe doesn't care. In fact, it's almost kind of worse when you do it from that standpoint, because you're not only quote unquote asking for something that's sort of needy just in its nature, but we're also throwing like a negative feeling on it too. So you're asking for that same vibration back. When you're vibrating from a lower standpoint, from a grudging standpoint, from an angry standpoint, from a I I hurt and I want you to hurt with me standpoint, that's what you're inviting back to you. Truly love gives wings. Love has power. Love can let someone fall in love with someone else if that's their desire. Love can stand back and say, yes, it hurts, it sucks, I wanted to be with them, but I'm happy that they're happy. Love is the thing that's capable of just saying, yeah, it hurt me, but you know what? That was really kind of how I took it. That was really my thing. You're probably busy. You got a lot going on in your life, right? We give them the benefit of the doubt. So when we find ourselves not being that way, What we're sending out is a very unattractive message to the universe, and it's what's being uh, reflected back on us. So we're getting more of that unattractive behavior. And so we wonder why we keep feeling worse and worse and worse and worse, or why things always happen this way and we're always frustrated. These are the things that we really need to pay attention to. Am I being like this? Am I saying this to the universe like I was saying a moment ago? Am I over this? Or, (coughs) excuse me, you will... Mentioned to somebody, uh, like maybe, maybe they're, uh, they cheated on you, right? So you might throw that text message when you get angry, when you get grumpy. You might drop that, well, you're just a cheater anyway, or you're just a liar anyway. And you'll throw that little phrase out, maybe in a text message, because you're hurt, because you're grumpy, because you have trust issues right now, because they did cheat on you, but you still want them back, but somehow you're going to keep smacking them with that. Mm, that's a problem too. That's a problem too. Something along the lines of you obviously don't care. How many of us have texted people that before because they didn't text back quick enough? Maybe it's been a day or two. You obviously don't care because otherwise you would have. Or you obviously don't love me because otherwise we'd be together. Or you obviously don't, right? You obviously what? No, we, we obviously had issues and we're obviously not together for whatever reason we are right now. But that's what needs to be replaced and fixed. That's where we need to self-love and all these things. But if we're constantly reminding the universe that they obviously don't care, you know, the us pushed out thing, right? You obviously don't care. Okay, universe is like, you're right. You're right. He doesn't care. Not anymore. He did actually a second ago. That's why he texted you back. And then he threw all this attitude at him. Let's see how long it takes before we see him again. You love so-and-so more than me. How many of us have been hurt because maybe they're dating somebody else right now? Maybe, maybe they liked somebody else. Maybe they broke up with you and started dating someone else. How many of us have gotten a little hurt? Or some of us might say butt hurt, right? Get a little butt hurt. And we have to say that comment. We have to egg them. We have to poke them. 
What is the purpose of the poke, right? We're generally, we're trying to manipulate their emotions, make them feel a certain way, make them hurt, make them angry, make them upset. All you're doing is reflecting that mirror back on you. All you're doing is asking universe, this is what I want back. I don't care how much imaginal you do and how much living in the end you're doing at night. If this is how you're behaving during the day, you're undoing all of it. Probably all of it. Because if you're being really angry and spiteful, which is mean, when you're being mean, that is so on the other side of kindness. Your energy is so not in a good place. And that is what you are attracting. So we've got to be really careful. Like I said, when we try this stuff with Unifers, well, obviously you're not going to give me what I want. Like we personify the universe. When in reality, again, it's us. What are we thinking on the inside? What is going on inside of me? What am I vibrating at? What am I feeling? That is what I'm advertising to the universe, basically. That basically, that's, that's what I'm asking for more of is how I'm feeling right now. And if we can find a way to get ourselves to that good feeling place, that place that feels so good, that we actually just literally start feeling good, and then you start to notice more good stuff starts coming back towards you. More, more often, kind of like I was saying at the beginning of this thing, being good and kind to people definitely creates really what I call positive karma. It creates positive energy for everything that we supposedly send out. The adage always was you get back tenfold, tenfold. Again, one of the key things about living, about our soul paths is learning how one, we're all one, we're all together, we're all connected, how energy matters, how words and thoughts matter, how what we focus on matters. So when we send out good things, we're rewarded with good things. It's that cause and effect. The universe is very, it's very easy. Granted, we're very busy and things are complex in our life and oftentimes we forget what we did to cause what we're experiencing. But when life was simpler, you know, back in the day, you know, 100 years ago, life was significantly simpler. It was a lot easier to figure out, you know, when you did a certain thing and a certain thing happened to you and you were just like thinking about that a day or two ago, eh, you know, you started to be able to make relations, causes, and, you know, they call them wives' tales, old wives' tales, right? Or that's some old fairy tale or some myth. But the reality is we're looking at a lot of these things nowadays realizing, no, this is extremely true. So again, the big takeaway, pay attention to what we're vibrating at, what we're sending out. What are we sending out? I get you might be hurt. Again, self-love, got to go back to self-love. If you're trying to initiate pain onto another person, you're begging, begging, begging for more pain to you. That is a promise. If you're pushing out Negative, angry, evil, wicked, manipulative, anything along those lines. Trust me, that is exactly what you are getting back. And no offense, and no offense, because especially if we don't know we're doing it, that's one thing. If we're intentionally doing it because we want to hurt them, ah, honestly, I, it, I'm glad it's coming back on you. And I'm glad you get to experience it because this is what you're sending out to other people. This is how you're making other people feel. And that's not cool. Again, we've all been on both sides of that. So when you make a mistake and you learn, you're like, ah, and you get smacked back. Okay, cool. Learn. Learn your lesson. Be cool. And it's great. But when you intentionally go out of your way to hurt somebody, that reminds me of bad experiences in the past. That reminds me of things I've had. Like, you know, that puts me into a place where it's kind of hard for me to feel bad for somebody. Really, It really does. It's like, well, you've made this bed. You must lie in it. So be careful what we're sending out. Love. Love. Lots of love. Lots of gratitude. Lots of gratitude. And if you have a hard time loving a specific, specific person, specific, specific person, that's not redundant. If you have a hard time doing that, then try to find something you do love. Maybe a dog. Maybe you get a pet. Maybe you need a pet. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe you need some sort of little mongrel running around in your lap that licks your face all the time or that purrs or whatever the whatever your thing is. Maybe you like that squeaky sound of the hamster wheel as that stupid rodent just runs in circles. Yeah because that's awesome. It's like he's training on a space station, right? Those little rodents, they don't even realize it. It's like, gravity's here, man. You're fine. Just keep walking. You'll walk off some of that fat, a little chunky rodent. Anywho, I hope that makes a difference. Hope, hope it helps. 
And, uh, and I do love animals, by the way. I hope that's obvious. I was just playing around. Anywho, we're going to be going out with a great song by Francesca Battistelli. I hope I'm saying that right. It's your life. It's Dan Radio style. Oops. There we go. In the middle, between wrong and 